So in the balanced view training, we really get to see the nature of our mind. We get to see the nature of who we are and the nature of reality. And the nature of mind is completely wide open and clear. Wide open and clear like the sky. And because the nature of mind is already wide open and clear, we can simply relax and allow it to be exactly as it is. The nature of the mind is purely beneficial. And so we can simply relax and allow it to be purely beneficial. And what we come across in the Balance View training is a educational, an educational system that allows us to train up the recognition of the nature of mind, to recognize the way that it actually is. So it's very, very simple and very easy. It is simply a case of relaxing, of allowing all of the data, all of the descriptions, all the thoughts, emotions and sensations just to be exactly as they are. And when we allow them to be exactly as they are, without indulging, avoiding or replacing them, then that pristine, open, purely beneficial nature of the mind becomes obvious. And what's interesting is when we begin to apply the simple instructions that are given in the Balanced View training to our own particular set of experiences. So the examples or the questions that were asked about anger and about desire are, are brilliant examples. I can see how before I had the introduction to the nature of mind, before I had the training in being able to recognize the nature of mind as being completely wide open and clear, then these particular descriptions, these particular data streams are ones that seem to have great power over me. And they really seem to control the way that I acted, the way I related, the way that I used my speech and my, my body. And it's been interesting to get to know these descriptions as nothing other than the beneficial shine of open intelligence. But um, because I trained myself up so thoroughly in emphasizing them, as giving them this power, as giving them this independent nature, it did take a little while before I could really recognize the actual nature of anger and of desire. So this is why the support network is emphasized again and again. It is a training. So we've trained to use our mind in a particular way. We've trained to use our mind to focus in on all of the labels, the descriptions, to try and make something out of them. And yet when we look at them, what can we actually say about them? All of them appear spontaneously and then self-release naturally. There's no way we can hold any thought in place. There's no way we can fix any moment in place. It's gone even before we try and describe what's there. So whenever we label something or we describe something, it's old, it's tired. We're trying to make something out of something that's just completely dynamic. Total spontaneous display. And we try and pin it down, we try and fix it, we describe it. So, with something like desire, um, we can use the favourite example of chocolate cake, but chocolate cake you could use as a metaphor or a euphemism for almost any desire. And that feeling of seeing a chocolate cake, when you're looking at that moist, delicious chocolate cake, and all that takes out, all you can see is that chocolate cake, the whole world disappears, <laughs> apart from that delicious, moist slice of chocolate cake. And it is actually probably the most beautiful, delicious <laughs> slice of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. So immediately you're starting to describe it. You're starting to make something out of this initial perception. And so by making this story about it, it really seems to be something that has this power. So now I've got this craving for this chocolate cake. I really want a chocolate cake. Now I know how much I like chocolate cakes. I know that when I eat chocolate cakes, there's this delicious flavor. But then comes the, the, all of the, the thoughts around that. Yeah, but hold on, I'm going to go to the beach tomorrow and 
oh god you know i want to look my best on the beach and but i really want the chocolate cake and oh but if i have the chocolate cake then you know i won't look as good on the beach tomorrow and perhaps my skin and the sugar and oh no and it's this whole complicated description and so training ourselves to relax right there to relax in the immediate perception, in the direct encounter of all of the thoughts and cravings and desires around the chocolate cake or whatever the chocolate cake may stand for. To actually face all of those descriptions, all of those data streams whilst relying on open intelligence. To allow yourself to feel everything fully around that desire and that craving and to allow it to be exactly as it is. And for me it was amazing to discover that when I left the desire exactly as it was, there was nothing but pure bliss benefit already manifesting as the desire. That desire was simply this, 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 this love, this enjoyment, this attraction to everything in life. It wasn't something that I needed to narrow down and to focus in on and say it's only through this chocolate cake that I'll feel fulfilled. The fulfillment of each moment is in allowing it to be exactly as it is. And then you can have the chocolate cake or not, but that's not the point. The point is to recognize all of those sensations, all of those descriptions as the shining forth of open intelligence as the demonstration of this pure bliss benefit. And then everything can be enjoyed. You can really make clear decisions about whether you want the chocolate cake or not. It doesn't become this huge problematic decision, this huge tension around desire. Suddenly it opens out and there's this ease and relaxation in the direct encounter with desire. And it's amazing to allow yourself to feel everything fully. just to be exactly as you are. And, and with anger, it took me some time before I could even for an instant allow anger to be exactly as it was. It took this training, this education, really getting to know the nature of my mind, before I could allow myself to feel anger and to allow it to be exactly as it was, even for a short moment. But in that first short moment of allowing my anger to be there, without indulging it, avoiding it, or replacing it, without acting out on it, without repressing it, without running away from the person or the situation, but to allow myself to feel it as open intelligence. That was a moment of incredible breakthrough because I saw exactly what the anger was. The anger was also included within this vast expanse of pure benefit. And when I left it undescribed, this power, this incredible force that we know, that we feel when we're angry, became available to be used for the benefit of all. In anger is great power, but it is the power of beneficial wrath. And that cannot be known until we face anger directly and recognize it as this potent benefit of open intelligence. So now what happens for me is that um, when I used to get angry, which did and probably still does happen quite a lot, it, it, was, it was really problematic because I, I didn't know what to do with it. If, if I spoke to someone when I was angry, then I, I can't think of a single circumstance where that was of benefit to myself or the other person. Now, either I would go away feeling terrible, or they would go away feeling terrible, or probably both. You know, that, that awful feeling when you've screamed or shouted at someone because of what they've done, because of what they've done to you, or what they've done to someone else, and that, you know, that horrible feeling afterwards. Or, 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 I, could, or I could bottle it up, I could try and not, not let anyone know how furious I was. And, and it, 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 I could, it was carrying this tension. And I could bottle it up and bottle it up and bottle it up and then at one point it would come out. And that would just be complete disaster, total overreaction. You know, usually speaking to someone that I really cared about in a way that it, it, was, just, it was just terrible. Or I could avoid, try and avoid the, the people or the places or the things that used to make me angry. Or try to, anyway. 
and, and I, I tried that and, and tried really hard and it didn't seem to matter where I went, there were always people that pissed me off. It didn't matter what country I was in, it didn't matter where I was, what time of the day, even who I was with, there were always people around to piss me off. And um, so none of these strategies really worked. So to allow the anger to be as it was, just for a short moment, to train up the capacity to rely and recognize an open intelligence so I could do that was an incredible breakthrough for me. And now what happens is when I get angry, I'm really glad. I, I, I really like getting angry because it's not something that has an independent nature and power over me. It is this dynamic energy of open intelligence. And when I allow it to be exactly as it is, that same power, that same force that used to come out in these really destructive ways, is now available to speak very clearly and very directly, if that is what is required in the situation. It may also be that nothing is required. It may also be that I don't need to say anything, I can simply allow it to resolve naturally. But if something does need to be said, if something does need to be addressed, then that power of anger is there to be used for the benefit of all. So everything gets turned on its head, everything is redefined as the beneficial potency of open intelligence. And that is what we're training up here, training up the capacity to recognize that beneficial potency amidst the flow of all descriptions, amidst this stream of data, without needing to change any of it all of it already this dynamic flow and nothing else. So this is why the relaxation is key. This is why we relax and allow ourselves and allow our data to be exactly as they are. Because in that relaxation we recognize that that is already the case. It's so simple and yet it has to be put into practice. And there came a time for me after I'd been around the training for a little while and I saw lots of benefits and I had many many insights and yet I was kind of on, on the periphery, on the edge of the training. Um, so I still had lots of data about organizations, about the people I saw here, you know lots of different ideas and emphasizing this data around Balanced View and I could see that this was meaning that I was just kind of partially involved and as I said I did see benefits from, from that approach but at one point I decided if this is something that I am interested in and I can see how powerful it is, I can see the results already, what happens if I actually really go for it? What happens if I really decide to participate regardless of all of the data I have around it? And so I, I tested it like that, I decided, all right, I'm, I'm going to go for this and I'm going to see what happens. And that opened out so much for me, that, that decision to really go for it, even if that's just for a week or for a month, just to go for it and see what happens. Because what dawned on me was that this is the most important education that is available to any human being on the planet, the education in the nature of mind really understanding who we are and what we're capable of. Really outshining and going beyond any of the conventional descriptions about who we are and what we're capable of. How we can relate. What is the basis that we want to relate to ourselves and other people from? Is it the same tired old ways of relating based on these ever-changing descriptions? I like you, I don't like you, I'm attracted to you, I'm not attracted to you, you're, you're interesting, you're boring. Hold on, you were boring a minute ago, now you're interesting. I, I, I found you attractive yesterday, but now I don't. Just relating based on all these ever-changing descriptions, it's just total confusion. There's no stability, no consistency, and, and no love there. The love is conditional, we're conditioning our response is based on how other people respond to us, or how we imagine they're responding to us. It's just this minefield, and it's just a made-up reality, based on these fleeting descriptions that are always changing. 
So instead we rely on the open intelligence that is the basis of all of these descriptions and we relate from that perspective of complete openness by allowing the data to be exactly as they are. And then the relating becomes really open-hearted. Then we become available for other people. Completely spontaneous in our responses, not, not, not basing our relating or our responsiveness on any learn conceptual frameworks at all, just embodying and enjoying this completely wide open nature of intelligence. Trusting in that. Uh, how do you trust in that? You trust in it one short moment at a time. Test out how it is to trust in that open intelligence. One short moment at a time. And then utilizing the rest of the support to really empower you in that choice. To, to allow you and enable you to see that you do have that choice. So everything is provided for you here. Now you can take it as, as far as you want to take it, but for me when I decided to go for it, it, it was the best decision I ever made in my life. Because that openness of mind influences and pervades all of my relating and every aspect and every, every instance of my existence. So to know that nature is of benefit in all circumstances. Your mind is the basis of all of your experience. Your mind is inclusive of all of your data, desire, anger, expectations, whatever it is. Get to know the nature of your mind and you will become clearer on all of the descriptions that appear within it. So thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for being courageous enough for to really come to understand what's going on, to see for yourself what is going on, not to believe what anybody else is telling you or has told you, but to really get to know the nature and the power of your mind. So important. <laughs>